Hi, and welcome to Trex Academy, where you can learn everything you need to know about deck building. I'm Brittany, and I have Devin here with me. Today we'll be showing you how to build a deck around an above ground pool. So Devin, walk us through some of the things a homeowner would need to research before setting up the pool itself. Okay, yeah, I think that's an excellent place to start. Right, obviously you can see the homeowner already has this pool installed, but some of the things that she had to consider before getting it installed, and that's adhering to your local municipality's code. Very important, right? And in this case, it's gonna be for your placement of the pool. Maybe you're gonna be adding electrical for a pump or maybe some outdoor lights, right? So you're gonna to wanna to adhere to code on those things. Some other things to think about is gonna be safety concerns of having a pool. There's gonna be a lot of kids nearby. Then also it's gonna be any liability for your insurance company. Make sure you get a hold of them and make sure that you can even have a pool in your area. Okay, so another thing to think about, which some people may overlook, is adhering to your manufacturer's guide for the pool, mm -hmm. right? So some people just wanna go in and just build the pool themselves without doing that, and there could be some safety concerns that come with that. Moving forward, this homeowner did get a permit, right? Like, as she should have, it's very good. And then, as you can kind of tell, we're sloping down here, which means all that water is gonna get pulled this direction. We'll cover that a little bit later. But in this case, that also means that we're gonna want our pool to be level, and to do that, we're gonna to have to have an excavator come out, dig a hole, and set a level pad for that pool. And before you do that, you're gonna always wanna to go to call811.com, right? And they're gonna come out, they're gonna make sure that you can dig wherever you're wanting to. Obviously, in this case, we didn't have any issues, but if you would have, the cost that it's gonna to be to repair those utilities that you dig through, if you don't get a hold of them, you just don't wanna deal with that. So right. make sure to call them, call811.com, get a hold of them first, then you can dig your hole and set that level pad for the pool. Okay, Brittany, so since we've entered this project after the pool was already set up, the first thing I had to do was go down to the local municipality and check the local guidelines of what they're gonna need and what their rules are for building a deck uh, next to an above ground pool. Make sure it complies with their code. 100% right. So was there anything unusual when you figured that out? Honestly, no, everything was pretty standard. Uh, obviously, they're gonna treat it like a freestanding deck, which makes a lot of sense if you think about mm -hmm. it. It's not actually attached to the deck. It is its own thing. Although there are a couple of exceptions because it's next to a pool. So one of those is gonna be code compliant railing. Doesn't matter the height of the deck. Okay. Another one is a self-closing gate. Right? All of these, like once you start to think about it, it's for safety. Keeping things on or off the deck. Exactly. So again, think about that gate. Somebody comes out of the pool, the gate doesn't close. Pets, kids, anything can now get into that pool without hesitation. Sure. Okay, so that's just gonna keep them from that. One more thing, at least in this municipality to think about, is the allowable gapping between the coping and the deck boards. And again, in this municipality, it's three quarters of an inch or less. And so I'm assuming that that has to do with getting your toes caught between the coping and yeah. the edge of the deck? Yeah, that's exactly right. And that makes sense, especially yeah. if you have small kids. Right, and that's why we're going to aim for even less. That's the maximum, but we want to be well within that, so okay. we're going to go for less than that. Okay, great. Yeah, great. So um, I was looking around and noticed that you started without me. Yeah, I did. I didn't think you'd be too offended, right? Nah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the homeowner actually made a promise to her family that they were going to get this deck done before the weekend. I just decided to come and offer my help, help dig some footings and set some posts. But don't you worry, because I've got one left for you. Good. All right, Devin, talk to me about this post you left for sure. me. Sure. So how do you know how deep to dig the hole or how wide to go? Okay, footing dimension depends entirely on your local municipality, and it's gonna be based on a lot of different factors. It's all part of the permit process, right? So long story short, always check with local municipality. Exactly, just always check. Okay. The other thing is, it looks like this is a little trickier than some of the other ones you previously yeah. did, and you left it for me. Right, exactly. Yeah, I would say a little trickier is probably the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be too much more difficult than any of the footings that I put in already. Okay. But there is a little more consideration. If you look behind us again, remember how we were talking about the slope, the natural slope of the landscape? Okay, that's going to send a lot of water down this way. Mm -hmm. It actually caused the homeowner some issues, and that's why she had to install this French drain, which is going all the way around the pool. It's just going to displace any kind of water that wants to sit here, take it away from the home and off of the property. Mm. And the thing is, it introduces a new consideration for us, because now when we're digging this footing, we can't just dig it and pour concrete right next to it. Right. Obviously, that's going to cause some issues, right? Mm -hmm. Could end up even encasing that drain pipe, basically making it unusable. So in this case, I went ahead and poured the footing, let it cure for a few days, and then we're just going to put that forming tube right on top of it. Okay. I've backfilled it, which was just 
basically pushing dirt and gravel up against it okay so that when we pour our concrete we know that it's not going to move and this tube will keep the concrete contained basically. exactly it's going to keep it off of that drain pipe okay perfect all right let's go ahead and drop this in well wait i have one more question okay what did you put on the bottom of your post all right so it is on the bottom it's also on the top all that is is a chemical preservative that i put on any cut in but this is a chemically treated post already. It's actually made for ground contact mm -hmm. and cement contact. This is just another step to make sure that it's gonna stay good for as long as possible. Okay. Yeah? All right. Mike, give me a hand. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is nice and plumb. Then I'm gonna brace it. After I get it braced, I'm gonna cut it and then we'll go ahead and pour that concrete in. Okay, well, I will get the concrete mixed while you do all of that. Okay, perfect, all thank right. you. Hey, Brittany, that is perfect timing. Yeah, we're, we're all, all set. set up. Yep. Looks like you got a lot done over here. Yeah, I think so. So before we start putting concrete in here, I have a question. Okay. How did you establish the height of your very first post and the notch? Yeah, no, I think that actually trips a lot of people up because really it's just this freestanding post out here. It's like, what did you have in relation to actually measure it up to, right? Right. Okay. So we know that our deck is going to have deck boards on top naturally, mm -hmm. right? So in this case, we're using Trex one inch deck boards. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and put that up against there. Then we would use a level just to make sure that our line isn't too high or too low. Okay. If you don't mind, give me a hand right there. You know this is upside down though, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I just thought that would make a better line than the bottom of that, so. Just, just making sure. Yeah, thanks. You keep me in check. All right, so I can make a line right there. And that's gonna be the bottom of my deck board. Okay. Okay, and we know that those are gonna go on top of our- Joist. Joist, exactly. So we're using two by eights in this case. Mm -hmm. And if we put that right at the bottom of that line, we can actually make another mark. And oh. since we know that our joists go on top of our beams, that's gonna be our beam height, but also it's gonna be our post height. Gotcha. Okay, so you also asked about the notch, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I wanna show you one thing. So now let's just imagine that this post is six inches higher. Mm -hmm. We would come in with a level for our first post, line up with that line have it the right way, and then we would get level here. That's where you'd know where to cut exactly. it. Exactly, mm. and then we'd make our mark, cut all the way through. Makes sense. Then our post height would be correct, but we still have to notch out our notch, right? To do that, since we're using two by tens, we can just make sure that that's nice and flush with the top of our post, make a nice mark, and go ah. all the way around, and then notch it out. That is actually very easy. Yep, exactly. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start putting in some concrete. Okay. So when we cut the notch in our post to set our beams down earlier, we determined that we needed a 12 degree angle cut on our beams. Okay, so we've got our two two by tens, which are gonna make up our beam. Mm -hmm. I've already actually transferred that 12 degree mark right here using a speed square. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a line all the way across so I know where to cut. Okay, so with that in place, I'm gonna go ahead and do a test cut. There's one thing I wanted to point out really quickly. So not all saws are actually created equally. Mm -hmm. Some have this really nice angle find here where you can pretty clearly see where you're cutting at, and others might just have a couple marks and you're playing a guessing game. So one good way to work around that is actually just use the side of your saw, make sure that your shoe is loose and it can move around, and then you'll just try to match that angle. I'm gonna lock in, and I'm gonna do a test cut real quick. Okay, so it looks like I have a little bit more to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna undo this again. I'll come in and just adjust a little more towards the angle of what I need. I'll do one more test cut. That look better? Okay, that's looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the way through. Okay. Okay, there we go. So we've got this one done, but again, a beam is made out of two two by 10s. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this one at that same angle. Okay. And since we know that we've already got our angle set, we won't have to reset that. Great. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out before you flip that, if you check this out right here, mm -hmm. that's just bad news. This is actually pretty typical. You'll see this in a lot of 
pressure treated lumber, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's okay, because we're just gonna cut around it. We don't wanna deal with this in the future, because this could end up being, I don't know, maybe you have a hanger there, you have screws going through that, it's something you just don't wanna mess with. So I'm just gonna make a line here, make a mark on the side, and that way I know when it flips around, I'll be able to see that mark and okay. what to avoid. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this over. Okay, and then I've got my line here. So again, I'm just gonna use that. Go all the way across. Hold this for you. Down really quickly. Make sure I avoid the one underneath. Clamp it in place, we'll be ready to cut. Okay. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way through. Again, we already found our angle, so now we can just go ahead and cut all the way through. All right, got both of our two by tens done. We can just affix these together and we're gonna have our first beam. Okay, Brittany, it's time to make our first beam. Okay, before we do that, we actually need to make some marks to see exactly where all of our fasteners are gonna go. Okay. Okay, and that's regulated by code. So in this case, we're gonna need to be at least an inch away from the edge of our board, the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with that edge. Since we have an angled cut, we can't just go an inch away from the top, right? Because that's gonna go down to our angle. So I'm gonna make a line down here from the edge of our bottom board. If I go all the way up, then I know that is actually the edge of our bottom board. Got it. Exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna make a line all the way across. And now that is transferred from the bottom, okay? So go ahead and measure an inch away from that. Okay. Give us a good starting spot. Can you mark that? Perfect. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna transfer that line all the way across. So now we know that we're an inch away from the side. Mm -hmm. But I also talked about being an inch away from the top and bottom. So I'm gonna make a mark right here. Now I'm an inch away from the top. And at eight and a quarter, That'll put me an inch away from there as well. Okay. All right? So now we can take our tape and measure out all the marks we're gonna be making for the rest of the board. Okay. Go ahead and I'll hold that for you. Thank you. Pull that all the way down. And I'll just have you make a mark every 16 inches. And this makes it easy. It's in a red box. Yep, exactly. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay, so we'll do the same thing down here, but things get a little bit different because we're not gonna be stacking all of our fasteners on top of one another. We're actually gonna do kind of a little stagger pattern. Okay, like a zigzag. Exactly, okay. so we're gonna be going in between that 16 inches. Half of 16 is eight. So I'm gonna measure off of here. And that's because of code as well. Exactly, yep, yep, we have to have that staggered pattern. We've got two screws every 16 inches, mm -hmm. okay? So if I start at eight, I can do the same thing. Care to hold that for me? Sure. Right at that mark we've got. Okay, and I'm gonna mark every 16 inches as well. Okay, go. Okay, so now we know that we're 16 inches away from each other. Mm -hmm. We also have to be an inch away from the top still, right? Right. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to do that using our speed square. Just gonna lock this in place. Ah. Yeah. So now you can see every place that we intersect the line that we've already made going to be a fastener. And so that's going to go a lot faster too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So here we've actually got a notch at eight and a quarter. It's exactly where we need to be. I can just set that right there and pull our square all the way back. It's a good tip. All right. How about that? Very nice. Okay. So now you can see you get a good visualization. Every time that we have an intersecting line, we're going to have a fastener. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we've got two different options that we can use when we're doing fasteners. One is gonna be a hot dip galvanized nail, mm -hmm. like we've got right here. And another are gonna be structural screws. In this case, we're using Simpson Strong Tie SDWS framing screws. Okay. okay, so these are both rated for the application that we're doing, mm -hmm. which is making our beam, it's gonna have a lot of downward force, right? A lot of people on the deck maybe. Sure. So I wanted to show you one other screw one other fastener rather that we, we've actually been using a lot, but these are not rated for the sheer force that's gonna be put on this beam. Okay. Okay, so these are not rated for this application. So instead, we're gonna be using screws and the nails that we've got. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple nails. 
So I just wanted to show you, you don't have to have a lot of expensive tools to do this, okay? So in this case, we're just using hammer and nail. Okay, I'm also gonna show you a screw. Okay. You kind of tell me which one you think is a little easier. That's great. Okay, there we go. So both of those are code approved. Great. All right, so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue down with our nails. Okay, we're just gonna be aligning it with the center of our post. How you look there? Yeah, I'm looking great. Okay. All right, so all right. with all of our beams done, it's time to do our first post to beam connection. Okay. So before we can move on to that, though, there's a couple things we're gonna have to mark just to set it up, make it a little easier for ourselves. Mm -hmm. First one is gonna be to make a mark right in the center of our post. Just make a quick line. Okay, with that done, I know that I want my bolts to go right in between that line, okay? okay. So in this case, I'm just gonna measure over. It's gonna be right at an inch and three eighths. Okay. We go ahead and transfer that line all the way across. And that way I know that's a good spot for my bolt to go through, right? So whenever you're operating the drill, you're just gonna be trying to follow that from the top. That way we know that our bolt's gonna come all the way back perfectly through and have a nice strong connection. Okay. Okay, so, oh, sorry. I was ahead. just gonna ask you, can I make a line on this side just to make yeah, sure? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Go ahead, hold that in place for you. A Couple more things to talk about while we're over here in regards to code. So one of those is gonna be that you need to be at least two inches down from the top of the beam. Okay. okay. The other one is you need to be at least five inches away from the bolt that you've already placed. So in this case, a natural spot might be two inches and seven inches. Now you could go down a little bit further from seven inches. In fact, we were going to, but we had some fasteners in place from before whenever we put the beam together. Oh. Chances are if you drilled right through that, you'd probably run into that nail. Gotcha. So we're gonna play on the safe side and we've got our two and seven inch mark. Okay, and that's where I'm gonna put my bolts. Exactly, perfect. Okay. All right, so go ahead and grab that paddle bit. You're gonna make a recess there. So that way whenever we put our nuts and bolts in, it's gonna be nice and flush with the front of the post. Okay. So I'm right here. A little bit up. Yeah, great. Okay, looks good. Okay, same thing on the bottom? Same thing. Uh, down just a little bit, perfect. In here. Okay, nice job. Thanks. All right, with the recesses out of the way, I think we can go ahead and drill the rest of the way through. Okay, so I'm gonna use this? Yep. And how do you know what bit size to use on here? Okay, so your bit is gonna be just a little bit bigger than the size of your bolt. Okay, so you got me set up. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna stand. I think it might make it a little easier. Okay, I'll get over here and make sure that you're level. There you go, perfect. Okay. I'll go down just a little bit, there you go. Oh, actually, you know what? Why don't I help you out? There we Thank go. You. Yeah, go ahead. a little bit. That's okay, that'll happen. There you go, just work it out. Just got a little too much of the wood into the bed. Am I far enough? All right, nicely done. Yeah, okay. I think I have just a little bit on this side. I'll line you up and then I'm gonna brace it again. Okay. Down just a little bit, up a little bit. There you go, right there. Ready? Yep. All right, nicely done. Okay, so if you don't mind, give me that paddle bit on this side. Okay. And I'm gonna bore out just a little bit, but in this case, this is actually important. As this was just kind of decorative, this is gonna make sure that I'm square with the front of my post whenever I really secure up that, uh, that nut and bolt. Okay. All the way through, this is gonna make sure that it pulls straight and not off to an angle for that washer. Okay, okay ready?
Okay. So for this connection, we're going to be using hot dipped galvanized half inch bolts, nuts, and washers. Okay. Okay, let me get this bolt released here. You can go ahead and thread that through the front. All oh, right. That's perfect. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, and again, since I've already paddled out and made a recess on the back end, whenever we tighten this, I know it's going to be nice and square with the front of the post. Gotcha. Looks great. Okay, got one more. Okay, push on this side a little bit for you. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and tighten it up. We'll start with the top one here. Just kind of hold it in place. I can work from this side. Okay, that one's good. Same Maybe thing the bottom. the bottom. All right, it's looking great. Okay, let's go ahead and get the other end done, and then we're gonna move on to our next beam. Okay. Okay, with all of our beams in place, we can get our first joist set. Okay. Okay, I'm looking good right here. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I just have a little bit of room in between the end of the joist and the pool. Is that yeah. all right? Oh, yeah, it's perfect. We okay. don't want the joist touching the pool. Okay. All right, so one thing I want to talk about really quick is our joist is sitting right in the middle of our deck, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason that is we have four posts. We divided that up into three different sections. So we're going to start framing here and work our way to the right. Okay. Okay, so before we do that, though, I kind of want to take a second to go over some of the critical connections we've already seen already. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be our footing to post connection. Okay. Then we've got our post to beam connection. Mm -hmm. And now we've got our joist to beam connection that we're working on now. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are all what the code would call critical connections of the deck. Okay. Why is it critical? All right. So imagine a scenario for me where this deck is completed. We've got all of our deck boards on. The hand railing is installed. We didn't connect our joist to our beam. Mm -hmm. So now imagine a huge wind comes up underneath the deck, right? Mm -hmm. what, what do you think that's going to have a tendency to do? I would say it would want to uplift the deck. Exactly. It's literally going to lift the entire, not the deck per se, it's going to leave our footings and our beams, but the joists, the deck boards, the handrails, they literally might be in a neighbor's yard wow. at some point. Okay. So that's why it's really critical that we make the connection in this case, using hurricane ties from our joist to our beam. Okay. Okay, we're just going to install those right there. That's going to make that critical connection. Great. Okay, okay so got some fasteners. Do that? Yeah. yeah, please. So is this going to go at the end of every joist and beam? Yeah, so every time that a joist intersects a beam, we're going to have to have one of these ties. Okay. And these top ones too? Yep. Got it there? Yep. I got you covered. Okay. Okay. All right. Good job. I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. I think you've got some more ties. Yes. Go ahead and fasten that one down there. Then we're going to make our way to our end joist. And after that, we'll attach our front rim joist. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, let's get our end joist installed. Okay. Okay, how are you looking down there? This looks good on my end. How are you down there? Oh, yeah, I'm perfect. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and install our front rim joist. So I've actually pre-attached two of our three inch structural screws that we're using earlier to attach our beams. Just going to make sure that I'm flush with the top here, flush with our corner. Okay, that looks great. All right, Brittany, if you don't mind, go ahead and raise that back end up a little bit, a little bit more. Right there is perfect. Okay, so since I've actually got a little bit of a twist, by having her do that, instead of fighting this twist, now whenever she puts the board down, mm -hmm. it's going to get rid of that twist for us automatically. All right, thanks, Brittany. Yeah, it's a good tip. Okay, just got two more screws down here. Okay, with the front rim joist in, we're ready to lay out the rest of our joists. 
Okay, so before we do the layout for our joist, there's one more important thing we need to do first, and that's to find the position of our guardrail post. Okay. Okay, so you can imagine the conflict that we might have if we have a joist right here, as well as our guardrail post. Ah, yes. Exactly. So, there's a quick and easy way to figure that out. I've got our 2 by 4 set up here, and then I've got some mock guardrail posts, which are just some cut 4 by 4s that okay. we've got laying around. I'm going to go ahead and butt that up all the way against the corner, and then I know it's going to be square with the front of my rim joist. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and grab that one, and we'll do something similar, but you have to imagine that that front rim joist is going that direction, and then you're going to put it in the corner. Okay, like this. Yeah, perfect. All right, so grab your tape. We're going to get the measurement from that corner down to the edge of our 4x4. Four four. All right, I have 103 inches. Okay, so 103, what's half of that? 51 and a half. Okay, 51 and a half, perfect. Go ahead and give us a mark right here. Okay. At 51 and a half. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this onto the end. Mm -hmm. So now we have the position of the center of our guardrail post. So I actually went ahead and made a mark on the middle of our four by four. It's gonna be an inch and three quarters in. And if I put that right over top, that's gonna be the final position of that center guardrail post. Okay. So now, with this tape measure already in place, we can look at our 16 inch on center because that's gonna be the maximum of all of our joists when we place them. Okay. So let's check all of our 16 on center and see if we're gonna have any conflicts. So we're good here because it falls directly in the center of those two yeah, 16 inch. Exactly, so we're gonna have a joist over here and a joist over here. Okay. So no conflicts, looks good. With that being said, let's go ahead and make the marks. So mark every 16 and then you can just put a little X to the left and that's just gonna notate where our joist is gonna go. All right. All right, awesome. what's next? Okay, well, we've got our layout in place. We'll go ahead and start installing our joist. We're just gonna be using the same process we've used so far, mm -hmm. using those hurricane ties every time a joist comes on top of a beam. Then we're gonna do that same process and finish up the next two sections. Then we're gonna come back and work on our post blocking for all of our guardrail posts. Okay, sounds great, let's do it. All right, let's get to it. All right, I'm good down here. Good on my end. Okay, so we've only got two more joists to install and this section will be completely done. Although I did want to give you guys a quick overview of everything we've gotten done in regards to laying down our joists and installing our blocking. Okay, so if you come over here, I did want to point out that every section is going to start and end with a row of double joists. So here you can see we've actually got four total because this is the beginning of our next section. And the purpose of this is going to be have a nice place to secure our breaker boards. That's just gonna break up the sections as we work along here. Then we also have a joist on each side of that breaker board, and that's for all of our deck boards as they meet up against that breaker board. We've also installed beam tape on all of our beams. And we'll make sure we get the joist tape as well before right. we get our deck boards on. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's just to extend the life of all of our pre-treated lumber. Okay, so one more note is as we've been installing these joists, we've also been installing blocking. In this case, we've actually pre-installed some of them, which you won't typically see. But in this case, as our bays are going towards the pool, and the bay is just this area right here, it's actually getting a lot more narrow. Yeah, it's get been very tricky to get into those tiny spaces. Down exactly. There. So that's why we pre-installed them, so they would just be a little bit easier to work through. And just to verify, you were saying earlier, mm. the purpose of the blocking really is just to provide some stabilization between mm -hmm. those joists, because it's wood, and as it dries out over time, it's going right. to shrink and kind of have a tendency maybe to warp. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's it. All right, so we'll get this back in place. I'm going to go ahead and install my front rim joist to our joist here. I'll take Using care of this side. Okay. I'm going to be using those same three inch wood screws that we've used earlier, just exterior grade. Okay. All right, looking great there. I'm going to take care of the hurricane tie as well. Okay, perfect. All right, actually, if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and get both of those in. I'll go grab the next joist. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm installing the last joist in this section here. And while I work on this, Brittany's actually gotten started on installing the joist in our final section. So we're just going to be following the same pattern that we've been doing so far. We're going to attach our joist to our blocking here using those three inch framing structural screws that I have here. The next, we're going to move to attach our front rim joist to our joist. 
But instead of using the three inch wood screws that we've been using so far, we're actually gonna switch over to these eight inch SDWS timber screws. And the reason we're using such a longer screw in this case is gonna be because there's gonna be a lot of lateral force on this front rim joist whenever we install our guardrail post. So I've actually cut a piece of scrap wood just to kind of act as our guardrail post so you can get a good visualization of what that's gonna look like. So we need this front rim joist to be very secure, but we also have to secure it from the back. And in this case, we're gonna be using a row of double blocking just made up of two two by eight sandwiched together. So I'm just gonna drop that in place. And again, because Brittany's currently working on installing those joists, I've just got a piece of scrap wood attached to the joist from the bottom. That's kind of acting as a helping hand so that I can work on this by myself. Okay, so I've got that in place and I'll be attaching this blocking to my joist with five inch timber screws. With that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this all together. And then I'm gonna move over and make sure I attach my blocking to my joist. Then I'll work my way to the back of the bay, get that last piece of blocking in. And I'm just gonna help Brittany finish up the joist. Okay, we're still a little high right here. Okay. All right, so as we've been installing our guardrail post in our first section, we're working our way over to our next section. Again, we're gonna be installing that guardrail post, but before we do, we've been going along and checking to make sure all of our joists are even. Brittany's been using a level to go across and look for any high points. So whenever you're installing your joists, you're always gonna to wanna to install that crown up. All the crown is is a vertical bow in your joist. The thing about crowns is there's gonna be a lot of variation between your joists. Some are gonna be flat, not really have much of a crown, while others might have a really pronounced crown. Mm -hmm. and what that's gonna look like in your deck is gonna be a variation between height, just like you're gonna see right here. Okay, so a good way to alleviate that is to take a planer and we're gonna actually work down those high areas. That way we have a nice flat field, nice and even so that when we lay our deck boards down, they're gonna follow that and be nice and flat as well. Exactly. So, as we just saw, this one looks, still looks pretty high right here. Okay, we're still high on the end, huh? And down here as well. Okay. Uh, you also have a little bit of a lip where your joist meets your rim joist, so you have to take that off. Okay, perfect. So as I'm running this down, obviously I'm gonna be cutting through my blocking a little bit too, so I'll plane those down to make sure they're even. And then it looks like we might have to work on a couple of our joists at the end where they meet our rim joist. Again, just making sure that the entire deck surface is gonna be even. So when we lay those deck boards down, it's gonna be nice and flat. Cause this deck is gonna be around for a long time. Yep. Really wanna take the extra steps to just make sure it's as close to perfect as possible. Great, okay, well let's get finished on that and then we can get our guardrail posts. All right, just gonna keep planing. So we've just finished planing this section of our frame. So now it's time to drop in our next guardrail post. Did want to point out again, we're using a scrap piece of wood. It's kind of a helping hand. This time just fastened with one fastener. That way we can rock it back and forth as we plumb our post. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and drop that in place. And you can tell that that's taking off the weight of our post and transferring it to our post blocking. Okay, you got it centered here. Okay. I got the level for this side. Can you get a clamp for me yeah, too? Yeah, for sure. Perfect. That looks good. And let me get the front. Perfect. All right, looks great. Hold that in place for me for a second. I'm gonna make the marks for those eight inch timber screws. So we need to be two inches down from the top and two inches up from the bottom. And again, we're using those same eight inch timber screws that you saw us use to secure our front rim joist to our joist. And that's just to make sure that we go through our front rim joist into our post and into the post blocking behind it. So because we're using such a long fastener, we're gonna to continue to use this really long pre-drill bit just to make sure that we get all the way through. Okay, Brittany, if you don't mind, just take a step back, just make sure that I'm level up and down. You're level. Okay. Okay, so we've installed all of our joists. Then we went back and installed the post blocking for our guardrail post. Our next step is going to be installing some horizontal bracing. So for that, we're gonna be using a two by six we're just gonna be installing this underneath our deck and every point that our horizontal bracing comes across a joist, we're gonna be using two of these three inch exterior grade wood screws. So this is gonna follow a chevron pattern, just meaning it's gonna take an angle towards the pool. We're gonna skip one bay and then start on the opposite angle going away from the pool 
to the edge of our deck. So just as we install Trex Protect beam tape on all of our beams, we'll be installing Trex Protect joist tape before we install our Trex deck boards. Yeah, it really didn't add much cost to our overall project. Right, and it's not gonna add a lot of time either. Well, let's get moving then. Okay, let's do it. All right, so we've got all of our posts installed, all of our joist tape is down, and we've actually completed installing the fascia and deck boards in our first two sections. I know, it's so exciting to see part of our project completed. I know, and it's looking really good. It is. All right, so let's finish off this last section that we've got okay. here. We're gonna do that by installing our fascia on the front, installing all of our deck boards, and we're gonna put in our breaker board. After that, we can finally get to our railing, build our stairs, and then we'll be able to build our skirting to go all the way around the perimeter of our deck. All right, well, let's measure this so that we can get the fascia done. All right, there you go. Yeah. And I'm taking this all the way to the corner, right? Yeah, that's perfect, right all there. Right. Okay, I've got 109 and three quarter inches. All right, well, let's go. It's my turn to cut the fascia. All right, you got it. So as we're installing this fascia, I think it's important to note that we are using 3 8 inch thick furring strips or spacers in this case. But we need to make sure that when we're installing our fasteners, we stay as close to these as possible without hitting the screws going through those strips. Because if you get too far in the center of those, you're actually going to draw that fascia board in and yeah. it defeats the purpose of the furring strips right. to begin with. With that tied up against there, there's going to be no room for water to flow through or for debris to go through either. And for let, let the frame breathe. Right. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and get it in place. All right, so it's important to note too that we've got these scrap pieces of two by four. These are just acting as a guide. As we bring it up, it's gonna make sure that the edge of our fascia board is gonna be flush with the top of our deck. All right, I think we're all in place there. Now we're gonna slide it over to our next piece of fascia here, making sure to keep a slight gap. So it's not important to have a large gap here because it's actually really warm today, so this shouldn't expand too much more than it already is. Slight gap will be perfect. Let's go ahead and clamp it in place. Okay, good down here. Okay, I think it's ready to fasten. So we're gonna start here, work our way down, but before we can put our fasteners in, we need to make sure that we pre-drill with this fascia pre-drill bit. So this is gonna create a recess deep enough to fit our fascia screw and our fascia plug. Hey, great job on the fascia, looks good. Yeah, thanks for finishing out this. Yep. All right, so since we have the fascia installed, we can install our first deck board in this section. So we actually had to notch this out because we have these posts in the way. And so I also thought this could be a great time to kind of review the gaps and different things when we're installing this deck board and the ones back. Yeah, I'd like to do that before we go any further, make sure we got it. Yeah. So we're gonna put an eighth of an inch gap between the edge of this deck board and the fascia board. Right, so in this case, we're just using a framing square because it's an eighth of an inch. You can use anything that you have on hand, might just be a scrap piece of wood, mm -hmm. just whatever you have. And you cut the notches out for the post, and I was commenting that you left a quarter of an inch here, and it looked yeah. a little bit big. A little sloppy, right? Right, but we know that we're gonna put the post sleeve skirts yeah. over top at the end, it'll finish it off. And so we don't have to be that precise, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, then we're gonna use color match screws around the outside or the front edge of this deck board to yep. fasten it down, and we're right. just gonna follow the joist pattern with Exactly, that. yeah. And so we also talked, though, about whenever we attach our front rim joist to those joists, we were using those three inch structural screws. Mm -hmm. So since we don't want to hit those whenever we're driving through our surface mount screws, we're just going to offset that by an inch, okay? So we're going to go an inch away from the edge and an inch over, and when we do that, we're still going to be 16 inches on center, but we're also going to be missing those structural screws. But you're going to hit the rib joist to catch exactly. that Exactly, yep. So we still have something to drive into. Got it. Okay. And then we're going to use hidden fasteners on this side of the board mm -hmm. and throughout the rest of the field yep. of the deck. And at the very end, we'll do the same thing using these color match screws. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drive this in and we'll work our way down. Great. So I'm going to be an inch away from the front and then an inch over. All right, let's go ahead and get our Trex hidden fasteners installed. I love this tool. I know, isn't that nice? It makes it way easier. It's like having an extra set of hands. Yeah, okay. 
what did you say these fasteners were made out of again? So these are made out of glass filled nylon with a stainless steel screw. What is glass filled nylon? Well, I'm not a chemist, so I don't exactly know what it is, but I know what it does. Okay. And it's going to last a really long time and it's going to be really durable. It's going to stand up to all the UV light and everything because we're in an exterior application like this. Got it. So these are a perfect fastener for what we're doing. Let's get this next one in place. We get one more here and then I'll let you start working down that way. Hold it. Yeah, that'd be great. Nice. All right, so we just used a rib fence to get a perfectly straight line to set our breaker board in. So the next thing we have to do is install our last two deck boards in our breaker board and this section will be completely done. It's gonna be a great feeling once we complete this and it looks really good. I love the hidden fastener look. Yeah, I think it looks great. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, this is one of my personal favorite parts of deck building in general. It makes sense. Right, because once we get this done, with this whole surface done, we're really gonna see this deck come to life and get a good feeling of what it's gonna look like completed. Awesome. All right, so let's get these installed, breaker board in. Okay. Then I'm gonna show you a cool little trick so we can cut the ends of our deck boards, but to make sure that we have a nice straight line. Go ahead and get our last two boards in. Good there? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, with our breaker board installed, it's time to cut the ends of our boards off. So, so far we've been using a rip fence, really just a Trex board to work as a rip fence to cut all the spacing for our breaker boards. Right. So since we can't use a full board here, we've got our posts in the way, right? Right. Yeah, we're gonna have to come up with something a little creative. So in this case, we're just using two by fours to work as our rip fence. And it's actually two separate rib fences that are gonna make one complete unit for a nice straight line. So it's just creating a guideline yeah, for Yeah, exactly, okay. all the way down. All right, so a couple things though you need to think about whenever you're gonna be cutting this line. So our blade doesn't run right along the edge of this two by four. Mm -hmm. It's actually offset from our shoe. Could be an inch and a half, or it could be, in this case, an inch and a quarter. Okay. So you just wanna be mindful of that. You also wanna be mindful that you're gonna be leaving an eighth of an inch gap between your fascia right. and the ends of your deck boards. Okay. Okay? So I've actually already made some lines so that we can place this in the right spot. Let's go ahead and get that lined up on that side. I'll fasten this one first. Got it. Okay. Then after we get this fastened, go ahead and have you do this cut. All right. Okay, so it's finally time to start installing our railing. So to do this, we're first gonna install our post skirt. Okay. Go ahead and drop that in. And we're installing this first to make sure that we don't scuff our post sleeve as we put it in. Okay, now we're gonna move on to that post sleeve I was just talking about. This is a four by four by 48 inches long. They come like that, but we actually had to cut ours to fit our application here. Just go ahead and drop that in place. Just 
like that. All right, looking good. Okay, I think we're ready to go ahead and install our bottom rail. Okay. All right, Brittany, we'll go ahead and have you drop those spacers in between our post here. Okay. Got our foot block hardware kit. And what are okay. these spacers doing? All right, so those spacers are going to act as a rest for our bottom rail. Not only that, though, we've actually pre-measured those at three and three quarter inches. So that we install our balusters and our top rail. Our top rail is going to be right at 36 inches, which is code compliant. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Go move this out of the way. All right, so the next thing to keep in mind when we're installing our balusters is that we want to keep an even space between this side and this side over here. Okay. So I'm just going to eyeball it first. Looks pretty close. Let's go ahead and measure each side. I'm sitting right at two and a half inches. All right, I have two and three quarters. Two and three quarter. Okay, I'm just going to move it over an eighth. And right there. That's Two perfect. and five eighths. Yep. Perfect. All right, get my square out just to extend that line all the way over to my post. Making sure that it's tight against there. Okay, and then off to you. All right, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get it cut. Okay. All right, so we've got our bottom rail cut, mm -hmm. and since our posts were plumb, we were able to also cut the length of our top rail. Yeah, it saved us a little time. Yep, and to save time, we've also went ahead and drilled in our 3 16 inch hole. That's going to be for our foot block. Okay. We'll be installing that later, but for now, we're going to be installing our brackets. So the way that we connect our bottom and top rails to our post are using these brackets that we've got. We're going to be using these one inch self-drilling screws. Okay. That's going to attach to our bottom rail. Once we have those in, flip it this way. We're gonna center it with our post sleeve. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna use these included uh, two inch wood screws. Okay. okay. That all comes in the hardware kit. So we'll get that in. Let's go ahead and flip it over, get that installed. We'll be installing our bottom rail, balusters, then we'll move on to our top rail. Okay. Start on this side, going in at an angle. Let's do one at a time as we work our way across. Perfect. Okay, just keep moving. Oh yeah, I've got a system going now. There we go. All right. A little tap. You want to get this in place first. Okay. There we go. All good. All right. Yep, right there. Mm -hmm. So we've got our skirt framing in place, which is essentially just a wall that we've built. So to conceal that wood look behind this fascia, we've used the extra protect tape that we had. Just put that right on top. You could also just paint this to get the same look. So now we're ready to start installing our fascia to act as our skirting. All right, thank you, Brittany. You're welcome. Slide this in place. Okay. How are you looking down there? Good. Okay, let's 
go ahead and install this fascia board. Okay. So I've used a fastener here to work as a helping hand. It's just gonna give me something to rest it on so I don't have to try to fight it while I get my gapping right. So I'm gonna leave a slight gap here to make sure that air can flow underneath my deck. I'm also gonna be keeping a gap on the end. Again, that's just for expansion and contraction. Okay, with that in place, let's just double check our gap down here. All right, looking good. Let's go ahead and finish off this section. All right. marks here. Okay. All right, well, Brittany's installing the skirting. I'm gonna start working on our stairs. Okay, so here we have our first outside stringer installed temporarily on our brace. We're gonna be installing our outside stringer on this side. And we're gonna attach those together with a header. Just make sure that it's all level and squared up. stairs can often be one of the most intimidating parts of building a deck but the truth is it's not that complicated if you want an even more in detail video on how to build a staircase you can go to trex.com forward slash academy where we have a video highlighting the process of building a staircase from start to finish we've wrapped up our pool deck and i think it looks great If you'd like to learn more about the entire deck building process, visit us at trex.com forward slash academy for a full library of detailed videos and instructions on how to build a deck of your dreams. Thanks for watching.